Welcome to the Marriage Counseling Podcast. I got my eyes on you. This is the eighth one. Been the first time. So we pass it along. Been the first time in about a year, and I decided to come back strong, really strong. So I brought in four other filmmakers to try to make this podcast good. I'm Dolva Spa. My real name is on the secret badge that I'm covering, and opens like that. Oh. You're on my channel, uh, so I'm not going to introduce myself uh, any more beyond that. Let's go clockwise. Clockwise? Yeah, you decide what clockwise means. That way? Oh, God. Hi, my name's Davis Kimball, and I'm a filmmaker from Washington. I like movies and... Uh, and uh, uh, that's it. That's the only thing I like. Um, I'm Isabella Pearson. I'm also a filmmaker from Washington, and I also like movies. So that's good. Oh, nice. That's nice. What about you guys? I'm Logan Earl from Bellingham, Washington. I like movies, and my channel is Fourth Corner Films, representing. Nice. Nice. Fucking prepared. I'm Sean McGeehee. Uh, I, I studied theater for years and uh, I also like movies. I'm glad we all like movies. Yeah. That was the thing that I thought I didn't want to break the trend because we already had you know four going strong. Now something to know about all of us. Uh, we've all been making videos and putting them on YouTube for six years plus. We've all published about a hundred. We've all mainly been directors, and we've all just barely known slash worked with each other. I haven't seen her before today. I don't know who this man is. So, you might have something that you might learn from uh, five people talking towards each other. Maybe you live in somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and you don't know anybody that even owns a camera. Oh. Maybe you don't know anybody at all. <laughs> I just want to discuss the similarities and differences between young video makers that have come into their own because we're living in an amazing time where people on low income can make a film that gets into a film festival and wins awards, you know? A lot of us bought the shit that we're making this with, uh, with our own money or credit. And I think uh, not enough attention has been given to the fact that we have so many new people getting into movies in a way that's completely different than how people have gotten into filmmaking before. Any one of us could make a really good movie and then bam, you have a career. No climbing ladder, no going to Hollywood, no going through hoops. Just make a good movie and you're there, ideally. I mean, you're going to have to work about marketing and all that shit, but marketing is getting very easy, especially with the advent of the internet. The first thing that really I think we should establish is, you know, our histories. Like, we're all at different ages and periods in our life. For example, you're out of college, but you're going back in. You're out of college and you're going to Hollywood. Maybe. I'm about to get out of college, and I'm never going to Hollywood. What about you? Um, I'm in college, and I'm probably going to go to Hollywood when I, once I get out to L.A. Um, I'm a sophomore right now. I'm in college, but I'm taking a gap year this next year to work on films and see what happens. There's this idea that you go to Hollywood, and uh, that's the only way you can make it, you know? But we have some stories. Sean, you went to Hollywood to try to start your career, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I went to Hollywood for about a month. Um, I literally lived on Hollywood Boulevard for like a week or two because uh, I had a friend there. And um, ran out of money after about a month. It's usually how it works. Uh, I didn't get any like calls back for jobs or anything. Uh, that was probably the biggest problem about doing that is like you probably shouldn't go to Hollywood without a job already lined up mm. if you're going to do that. So that's probably the biggest thing. Um, yes, yeah, so I ran out of money and now I'm back. What did you discover in Hollywood? Didn't somebody like offer you cocaine at a party? <laughs> uh, I don't know how much I'm willing to tell on camera. Uh, I don't know if you have to go to Hollywood for that. Yeah, okay. that too. Um, <laughs> Sean, did you get any hugs? Oh. I know about those crazy Hollywood hug parties. I don't know if I got hugged once in L.A. Oh shit, I'm sorry. No, well, that's why I didn't it. break into the industry. A homeless woman did spit on my friend outside of a bar once, <laughs> so nice. that was probably one of the most entertaining bits there. Mm. All right. So, Davis, why the what? fuck do you want to go to Hollywood? Oh, I don't have a plan. That's why I said a maybe. <laughs> yeah, it slowly hit me that I was like, wait a minute. I don't have any money. And I was like, what if I go there and I just get depressed? And then I blow my brains out in an apartment. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I should probably I should take some time to think about this a little bit. 
Davis, I'm, I'm getting a real theme here of, uh, of uh, no, sadness. No, it's cool. Are you okay? No. Uh, so I keep hearing all these horror stories, and I've always been committed to always making movies on my own, no matter what. Yeah, sure, I'm not going to rule out Hollywood and be a purist, but I'm not going to climb any ladder except the one that got me on this roof and will hopefully get me down. <laughs> How long have you been waiting to say that joke since we got up here? There's so many directors I admire that are always like... That one guy made some movie where two guys fight with lightsabers at a party, and then that guy made Chronicle, and then that guy made Fantastic Four. Yeah. And it all started with he just made some shitty video on, like, a phone. And, and then he like, made shitty movies. Yeah, and then he did, but he still <laughs> made them, and yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. I've heard too many, like, even successful people saying, like, you should stay local, you should work with the people that you know. And, and the other thing is, like, I wouldn't want, like, as much as I loved L.A., uh, it's really hard to, I think, be creative there. I don't know how so many people have that, like, ambition to keep making things, uh, not only because of, like, how expensive it is, but, like, there's so much other people trying to do the exact same thing. Like, there's a huge sea. You got a sea of, sea of people swimming together, and they're all fighting for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the egos are huge. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I met so many people that were, like, there's no one is very genuine there. Like, I came back here inst instantly. I was like, oh, you guys are, like, real people. Like, you'll talk to people. You'll have emotions. You'll connect with people. Everyone in L.A. is like, what can you give me? What can you do for me? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It is. It's very unfortunate. And I've realized uh, whenever I've done a video or a podcast, I've never had a huge problem with allergies. Huh. And I'm thinking about that now because I'm deathly allergic to cats. Isn't that your cat? What sort of videos do you guys think you make? That's a hard question. There goes my last <laughs> oh. There's another right. step right there. Now it's even harder can't to get. get him. How's that for drama? I had that impulse <laughs> ah. in my brain like I should do something. Because they were right here and then I didn't act on it. Oh. I've seen people... Uh, oh my <laughs> god, stop. <laughs> That's making stop. it harder, dude. Watch for the camera. Yeah. Sorry. I'm watching. Also, watch for yourself. Yeah. This cat's got a vicious streak a mile away. Hey, my glasses are falling. not worth your life. Okay. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah, so Davis, what kind of what kind of videos do you make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make spoof videos. Based on video games in my place. Now I've always found that's probably the hardest thing about making films is finding other people that have the same ambition and the same drive to create as you do. Yeah. Not only that, but to find someone that would be good to work with. So a lot of the time, it's like I could just grab some dude off the street, but like I wouldn't be my best work because I'd have to be working with someone that doesn't know the process or someone that doesn't really want to be doing it. Mm. I, a lot of the earlier work like I made, and I know Devin made, it's a lot of like using friends or people that, you know, they're not actors, they're not filmmakers, they're just people that, you know, are around. Mm. They don't have the same, they don't want to make movies. And a lot of the times your work can suffer for doing something like that. I feel like some of the guys we started out with were pretty good though. Well... Some guys I tried to keep around, you know? Yeah, it depends on if you know how to direct or not. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you could, you could, a good director could direct anyone to be a good actor. Yeah. In my opinion, everybody has at least one good performance in them. <laughs> yeah. Even this guy that just like uh, yeah, freezes sure. up and can't say a full sentence in front of a camera. Yeah. There's something in him that you gotta mine at, you know, and refine that ore. Well, that could just be his character. You yeah, play himself. exactly. Yeah. Get, I love, yeah, there's the, I love the trick of getting people to play themselves. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, everybody you know has this one joke that they tell pretty well, you know? You focus on that and expand it, you know, for a character in a video. You just do what I go with. All right, Devin, what kind of movies do you make? <clears throat> yeah, Devin. Mm. Now, I could give you the bullshit answer of how I'm trying to do a little bit of everything. But usually what I go for is comedies. Ever since I was a kid, I came up upon the stark realization that if I tried to make anything serious or that was a drama, I would end up just making people laugh their ass off. They wouldn't be able to take my drama seriously. Even my newest video, people are laughing at because they can't take it uh, seriously as a crime thriller. You know? Safe house. Some people. Some people like it. I don't. So I decided at a young age to just simply make comedies. Uh, and to me, comedy is actually the perfect genre. In fact, it shouldn't even be considered a genre because everything can be a comedy. You, you take a horror, add comedy. Is it a horror? No, it's, now it's a comedy. It's like 
it absorbs everything, all encompassing, because everything can be in a joke. Uh, oh, no. Everything in life is a joke, and to me, the act of maturity is realizing that, realizing that everything is just a fucking joke, and that's why comedy works so well. And but anyways, I stuck to comedy because it's easy to do. Because uh, when you're a little kid, that's kind of the only thing you can be do. You can't have serious thoughts about yeah. politics, or can't. Uh, you can make a comedy as good as any other genre. So that's why I think it's beautiful to just start on that. I had so many good stories, uh, at least stories that may be good, that I wanted to do. You know, when I was 13, when I was 14, when I was 15. I'm 21 now, still not at that point. Uh, I really like horror. That's one of my favorite genres. Um, I think there needs to be like more good horror out there. Um, <clears throat> have you guys seen The Babadook? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you have? I, I haven't. Oh, it's really Everybody good. else said yeah. <clears throat> Real yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, it's, really yeah, it's great. It's a good flip. <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. <laughs> but uh, I guess my movies sometimes could be considered dark in terms of um, maybe kind of. Um, sad a little bit mm -hmm. I don't know sometimes kind of sad not exactly I try to stay away from sad porn for having things just be sad for the sake of being sad mm -hmm. um, or <clears> pornographic or pornographic yeah I haven't done anything really pornographic yet um, maybe I'd like to I'm not sure but um, <clears throat> I definitely connected with what you said about kind of like surrealness um, I really like magical realism mm -hmm. definitely really interested in like the human condition human consciousness um, why we act the way we do, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you don't like sad burns, so what sad themes, what sad elements are fair game to you? Um... Like, how are you gonna make me sad? Uh, <laughs> um, well, maybe sad just by, uh, being brutal. Mm. Brutally honest, I guess. Uh, that's what I'd like to strive for. And I saw Synecdoche, New York. Have you guys seen that? Uh, I've seen parts of it. Yeah, it's fucking really up. <laughs> I was like, fuck! By the time I finished it, and it was so sad, the whole thing. But um, I felt like it was the reason it was sad is just because it was so honest. Um, I really like films that just make me, that just kind of expose sides that maybe I wouldn't like to, to look at in myself. So in, in that way, making people sad. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say sadness might have the longest lasting effect of things you could put into a film. Sadness is great because it sticks with you. You go, comedy go, <laughs> when's the next joke? Yeah. But with, I don't know. Well, it's sadness, you're like, oh God, I want it to stop. Now I'm going to think about it all day. Well, I, I think it's easy to like just rationalize away like emotions with movies too because you're just like, oh, it's just a character. We're yeah. here at the end of the row with. The oldest guy in the group, Sean. Wait, how old is everyone? Uh, 23. 20. Okay. 20. I'm 21. 25. All right, that's good. Nice. Good number. <clears throat> quarter through life. All right. Yeah. Tell me about that first quarter. Tell me about your 25 cents. Well, uh, it's uh, it's been a good run, Devin. Thank you for asking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I plan on making uh, doing doing another another quarter century at least All right. before I kick it. <laughs> Can I kick it with you? Yeah. 50 is pretty young to die as a filmmaker. You do realize Alfred Hitchcock, Jimmy Stewart, Stanley Kubrick, yada yada, all made their best movies in their 50s, right? That's another word of advice. You're probably going to make all your best movies in your 50s. You have a long time before you start regretting your life decisions. Don't judge my lifestyle, Devin. <laughs> Live fast, die faster. So what sort of films do you make, man? Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, I do a lot of film slams, like the 48-hour film slam stuff. I like doing a lot of those. Those are great. Those are a lot of fun. I've done yeah. 11 of those now. Wow. Yeah, I've written two screenplays, and I've written a few TV show pilots. I like writing a lot. I've written a book. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still editing that right now. Wow. Um, a lot of my best, like, I do a lot of sketch comedy also, like a lot of you. Um, and a lot of those, like, some of the best jokes to come up with are like, <laughs> what would be funny? I don't know. Mermaid drinking blood. Great. I didn't want to be like that guy. I'd be like, no, obviously I'm going to come up with a better idea than you guys, but like, no, I, I can't. It's hard not, when do you pull the seniority card or when do you like step down? And that's the other big thing, like, even working with you, Devin, like, I would love to be able to direct more. Like, I've had five years of theater training and stuff, and like, I, I know how to talk to actors and stuff like that, and like, I do, I do a lot of character work and stuff. Uh, 
and it's hard it's like when you say like hey i think i have an idea like how i could direct the scene better or uh you know i can probably like t tell these people how to get to where you're coming from like what you want the scene to be too and that's another big thing i've had trouble with like working with other people i do a lot of like experimental stuff i like doing art art film stuff uh mainly because having to work alone so much of the time because uh, i'm not i don't live around people now so yeah, like art stuff i hear lots of people y'all got like multiple things that you try to do my videos are just varying degrees of weirdness <laughs> on a note don't be afraid to say ideas for me i mean i know nobody says no faster than i do sometimes but i'll listen i'll listen yeah. that's for sure because anybody can have a good idea the guy that doesn't take the project seriously whatsoever would be like, I don't know, maybe it should be a silver egg instead of a golden egg. And then everybody's like, that's the perfect idea. If you have a culture where you realize that anybody can have this good idea. Anybody can have a good performance. Anybody can have a good idea. So watch out for that. Keep your fucking ears open. Okay, there are a few idiots, all right? But <laughs> listen to them, all right? And just practice saying no to them. But always be ready to say yes. I'm curious what each of us feel is like our weakness as a director. Oh, perfect! <laughs> you know oh, I, I think that would be... <laughs> I, I don't know. Davis, you got an idea, but you don't want to say it, right? It was just low self-esteem. I'm real quick to be like, let's just stop filming. Let's just go to Dairy Queen, and then <laughs> we'll just do that instead. And I'm like, that's a better use of an afternoon than whatever I was going to make. I think when I get a good idea, I'm like, I'm really excited for it. But I can tell when I'm like, you know, my heart's just not in it. I'm just going to have to cut it, and then... If I could get to that stage quicker than having to realize it when we're on set, that would make my life a lot easier. I think it's for me, uh, it's focus. I get distracted very mm. easily. And I don't mean just like while I'm directing, but like as I'm trying to get the film to be a certain way, I have a strong issue with cohesion. This is why I've strayed away from advanced stories. Like I put quality over anything else because that's an easy thing to set your goalposts for. You know, just make sure that it looks better. It sounds better. That's always been my number one thing. Uh, and I've paid for that, you know? I've got videos like uh, Febreze Man that have a lot of effects, have this special colorization, good pacing and everything, but the video says nothing about the human condition, you know? And, I mean, there's very few to take from that, you know? I mean, at best, you get a good parody of something that annoys you in real life. And wh where else are you going to get that? Everywhere, you know? The whole fucking universe is doing that. Even alien species we don't already know about are making fun of themselves. And, uh... Okay. <laughs> it's, some, it's worked for me in comedy, but it won't work for me in other things, you know? Once I start trying to tell more developed stories, which I want desperately to do, uh, I'm gonna have to realize that, hey, I can't do something just because it looks nice. I can't have this one camera shot shot at this hour differently from all the other camera shots just because I want this lighting. That's not going to work for, uh, sometimes from an artistic standpoint, sometimes from a logistical standpoint. Like, I don't stick to a story, you know? I stick to uh, an image, a video for a short term, you know? I want a good scene. I don't want a good movie. You understand? You got videos like Febreze Man and Almanutty, Waterman, Utility Carol, my four best videos. They go from scene to scene, and each scene is good, but they're all two minutes, three minutes, and they don't really connect each other pretty well. They feel, it feels like a fucking Skittles bag, you know? You got like five different colors. Oh, right, these are Skittles. But I should be having pot roast, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, I, I lose my way. Like I am in this very converse, in this very monologue. Yeah? <laughs> I guess the last thing I can say is, I easily forget what I'm doing, and I'm also constantly making myself being the only person doing stuff on set. I'm staunchly individualist, that's another problem with me. I try taking complete control over my films, even to the little things. I've done movie shoots where I am the sound mixer and the camera operator and the actor, and I'm happy with that, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I'm happy with being literally the only person making a movie. I try to be collaborative. I like working with other people. That's why I got fucking you guys here. Oh, thanks. But at the same time, I just... He wants to leave. There would be points where like people would sit down for hour, an hour while I would set up a shot all by myself. I would set up the microphone. I'd set up the lights. I'd, set, I'd rehearse my own lines, and they'd just be sitting around. 
when you come to my movie shoots, you realize there's a lot of hanging out because I try to shoulder everything. And I don't know why that is, precisely. I know I'd have to get a therapist. I could be arrogant. I could not trust people. All I know for sure is that I have a strong sense of like uh, individualism, all right? One person, one film. But I, I won't be hypocritical. If any of you guys are making a movie and I'm helping you, I'll be your slave, all right? I will understand that you should be the only creative force in this, so I won't push for anything hard. I say, okay, you guys can all play around until I need one of you. I, 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 I like have them just play in the other room with toys or something. <laughs> Like, I've become so arbitrary, and I've been, my, my movie shoots used to take five hours. It used to take me five hours to shoot a movie. Now I'm shooting movies for 12, 13 hours. Oh, boy. And the only reason for that really is, like, uh, I'm putting so much more of my brain power into that. Okay. I don't know. There's got to be a trade-off. I've got to work with other people to some capacity. I can't be the gaffer, the sound mixer, and the cameraman on a fucking movie shoot all the time you know I gotta get past that <laughs> I relate a lot to what you said um, I definitely like to do it all <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, I, I um, probably my main weakness as a director is uh, knowing when to listen to people and to trust other people but then also knowing when um, I know what's best um, it's like a fine line you have to know yeah. that you're in charge but like and you have to really know the, your vision well. Yeah. Um, How are you going to know when you're wrong? I don't know. It's hard. Um, currently, I'm making a movie with, like, for the first time, like, an actual crew and actors. Um, and I'm really learning to give up certain roles. Um, I have someone else who's DPing, and I'm one of my favorite parts about making a film is how it looks mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I really like being behind the camera but I'm also realizing that this other person who's being the DP knows way more about lighting than I do he, he has a lot more that he can bring to the table the great part is I make the decisions but I get people who are specialized in certain you know uh, positions mm -hmm. who get the vision and then that's how it's gonna work mm -hmm. I don't have to do everything because I don't I can't do everything. I'm not the best at everything. I think one of my hardest struggles is um, is just really being able to keep my own vision, but also being able to motivate people to get excited about you wanting to make a film with me because that requires, you know, them feeling like what they're doing is important to this movie and like you cannot create it without them. And um, what I realized is that it's also on me too to be able to communicate clearly what I need to people mm -hmm. even if that takes more time for me to you know stop and talk to them so like I want to feel like what I'm making isn't just driven just by me but also driven by the people around me because I feel like that's so much better when you get a piece that everyone's proud of at the end of the day so it seems you sort of divulged from me on the one man one film theory right yeah how yeah. come well Don't my man, man, shut the f up! Are you tell me he flips burgers for a living? Yes. What are you trying to tell me? It's the devil, Davis. He's working as a part timer. Where is he? He got 20 years, and me, I got put in a home. It wasn't a good life, but it was a life. We kind of didn't want to say nothing, but. We're kind of worried about the water contaminating a little bit. We saw, you know, just a body floating, so thought I'd let you know. Fuck! We're back after this, uh, back this word story. from our sponsors. I was probably going to put in, like, snippets of your guys' videos, by the way. Might right, well. cool. That'd be a good commercial break. <laughs> okay. So, we got Sean Where explaining to us yeah. what he yeah. works at. So like I've gotten over a lot of the things I was bad at. I used to be really bad at criticism, um, but like since writing a book, I have gotten nothing but criticism for like the last nine months. So it's like 
I've gotten a lot better at handling when people are like, this is shitty, you should change this, or you know. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm actually like really into criticism now, because it actually makes things better. The biggest thing is that I don't know that much about like cameras or, uh, you know, like the technology behind filmmaking or like lighting and stuff. I know a lot more about like acting and writing and that kind of the, the actual storytelling aspects more so than um, like I know when a shot looks good but I couldn't tell you like what fucking ISO even stands for. How do you guys feel about your previous videos? What do you feel when you look back at everything you've already made? What I'm thinking is something a little bit more complex, you know, progress, that's obvious. Alright, if you guys didn't progress past 14 years old, you want to come anywhere near this roof. Wait, are you talking about so, our films specifically, or our lives? <laughs> no, how you feel... Oh, no, that would be too big. Uh, I mean, like, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer my question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Give like, for example, the feelings, you know? Like I said, progress, that's arbitrary. We know that's going to happen. So, when I look at my movies, you know, I don't feel embarrassed like some people would. You know, in fact, I like, I love, I have like a deep, for some, for some reason, a deep love for even some of my oldest films that I made when I was 14. And to me, my whole catalog has been me constantly making the same movie again, but trying to make it as good to other people as it is to me. I know my movies are bad uh, at 14, 15, uh, you know, even closer to now. But... And I knew that when I was 14. I knew I was not making a professional film. I didn't have any false senses of grandeur. But I loved watching my own movies. I loved making them. And I wanted other people to get that feeling, you know? And I realized in order to do that, the in-between is making the movies better. How do I make a movie that's a lot like my first films that I made when I was 13 years old that other people like? I want to keep that same spirit of the 13-year-old. and. That's what I've been trying to do. I like my new ones as much as my old ones, as ones that I made in my middling years, you know? Because there's a lot of in-between from 2008 to 2017. I like them all, generally. And I, I feel no shame. In fact, I get into constant arguments with Sean and other people about uh, exactly what their merits are, because I see things in them that other people don't. They're all shit. Can I just mention that someone's mowing their lawn at 9 at night? You, you think it's bad now, at 10 o'clock, one of our neighbors is going to start playing bagpipes. It's happened <laughs> really? before on podcasts. Yeah. <coughs> I find that I'm, I'm my own worst critic. Yeah. And Same. that, yeah. you know, when I get more distance from a project, I start to appreciate it more because I stop seeing it as just mistakes. I start to see it as the things that went right. So. Most of the time, the criticism yeah. you'll get, with, from what I've found, is they are being the nicest they possibly can. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. the real criticism that they want to say, they won't say until they give you like three more notes and then they're like, all right, now that we're talking long enough, I can be honest, this is yeah. really bad, yeah. you know? That's what I like about you. You're, you're, I'm very honest. You're pretty quick to that. And honestly, I don't cave under that. Like I said, I have that fuck you attitude. That's, yeah. And that's not an insecurity thing. That's me realizing there's a discussion that can be had about this. All right. Yeah. And absolutely. I'm going to provoke you to make your criticism more well developed. Yeah. So that it benefits me, it benefits you, mm -hmm. it benefits our communication. We're gonna say shit to each other, and we're only gonna get maybe this mad at each other for like 30 minutes. Yeah. I like that. I like that aggressive experience. You know, not violent, aggressive. Yeah. interaction between um, people because like a sportsmanship like a mm. friendly fight kind yeah of. like we're having a boxing match be like huh hey by the way i yeah. don't like this one shot you move <laughs> yeah i've had so many arguments about a single shot i'll yeah. tell you what like for example i was using this lens in a camera shot and i had to get two characters they were on opposite ends of the screen you know but i had to get them to stand so close to each other their nipples were almost touching <laughs> and they were saying these people aren't male cameramen they're actors male <laughs> It's pretty close. So yeah, very close. <laughs> <laughs> and they were getting mad at me. They said, Devin, why the fuck do we have to stand so close? Dude, these actors don't know each other. And I said, listen, this is a 20 millimeter lens. It needs to be done this way. Yeah. Fuck you. And I'm saying, just trust me. You understand, okay? Mm -hmm. And like, we're arguing by like, well, even if we weren't this close on camera, why should we look at each other like that? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, let's just go through the shot and I'll show you. They see the shot and they see, wow, that's what the lens does. Because they like, uh, they looked this close. They felt this. They were this close in real life. Yeah. But they were this far away from each other on opposite ends of the frame in a nicely framed shot, at least I hope. That's an example of just how quickly 
an argument can come up, you know? Because sometimes actors, they don't understand what's going on yeah. on a technical level. And I think we as directors, we need to fill them in out more on that. We can't just treat them just like they're actors. Like, we can be nice to them and just not explain things to them. All right? That's, that's probably what we do. But we should trust an actor's intelligence enough to know, hey, man, this is what a 50 does. This is a, what a 20 does. This is how I intend to edit your scene after it's done. So, if you could fucking be in character when the other actor is talking, that would be nice. I personally like it when actors are curious about the technical side of things. Mm -hmm. Because, like, it, it, I think it comes down to kind of, um, I feel like I'm, I'm giving them something in return if I'm not paying them. You know, like, if they learn something today that they're like, wow then maybe they'll have a deeper appreciation of filmmaking and want to continue making films with me, you know? Because yeah. investment is important. Oh, certainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want these people to be interested, so if they want to know something, fucking tell them. Fuck them, ex give them a whole manual straight out your noggin. We're still going to be working with non-professionals maybe until our 30s, and we're going to rely on these non-professionals. Let's start with Davis. Okay. I was gonna you look at all your videos. I think you've technically made the most videos of all of us. Oh, okay. With like 300 or something, if you count all the... Because you got the biggest variety, too. You got podcasts. Shitty videos. Okay videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. There's like podcasts. There's there were let's, let's plays. plays skits. Sketches. Skits. Your videos are shorter, uh, so you make them faster, too. Yeah, sometimes. There's been a bit of a slump lately. What The way I like to see them, though, is uh, I've always thought of them as like snapshots for where I am at that time. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll be like, why is this one so sad? And I was like, oh, it's probably 14. I was being an angsty little little baby. And then uh, I'll watch another one. I'm like, oh, I was really into cinematography this year. So I was like, really just like, shot. Um, so each time I see a video, I'm like, I was trying to do this because at that time uh, I was crying. Like, mm. I, it's always, I can pinpoint to be like, I know what I was going through because that influenced it this way. So like mm. stuff like that. I haven't made a video where I was like, now that's art, or like, that's good. You know, like, you guys who make good videos. But, so, for me, it's more of just like a little picture. And I say like, that's me at 20. When I'm sadder, my videos are weirder. That's all. Okay. Like I said, it's on that weirdness spectrum. <laughs> They're more off-settling, like, I don't give a shit when I'm sad and making a video, I think. <laughs> when you see how I edited some of my videos I made, my dark period, like 2000, 13 to 2015 basically 2013 up until Febreze Man came out I was miserable <laughs> and my video sort of reflected this apathy towards my own projects which ended up having some ups to that surprisingly because it say, affected my editing style do you ever see that error and think like I wish I'd go back there and you're like I should be miserable again to see if I can recreate <laughs> it has I ever like has I've had that before where I was like oh I should do something crazy and then maybe that'll shake up like how it was shook up at this time or something. Yeah. So you feel like proud of your projects or do you feel like uh, I, I feel very, the service as? I, I feel very proud but I think they're horrible little features. Okay. Like again it's very much I'm like that's what I was like at 13 mm -hmm. and I just laugh and I'm like oh what a stupid little child and I'm like that's what I was a week ago and I'm like even dumber. Criticism comes a lot closer to me when I'm uh, making a movie I noticed. Yeah. But once the movie's done, You're like, I have said to you, do? like, time to make the next one as soon as fucking possible, because yeah. this one wasn't perfect. I, I always try to do one neat thing, or there's, like, an effect I want to try, or I'm like, let's do, like, one where someone freezes time or something, and that's the effect, and that's all I want to do in the whole video, and if I do it correctly, it's fine. If the cinematography's bad, that's fine. I wasn't aiming for that. Do you feel like young video makers should generally go for that? I think they should make as many videos as they can, mm -hmm. because... Like, like you said, it's always about like moving right on to the next thing. And I think it gets harder as you get like older and you start seeing more things and yeah. there's more people. So it's nice to be able to just like make a movie and that's it. Goddamn like, leaf blower. I made a ton of like, what if it was Final Fantasy VII but it was me and my friends? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? And then we just did it. And I was like, oh, it's radical. And yeah. look at it now, it's awful. But like, yeah. But those first videos with your friends were so amazing. I know. Because I did that with Nerf guns. Where yeah. We did a war movie, but with Nerf guns. We loved it so much. And I try to do it now, and you're like, what's the point? What's the message? Yeah. And then it's it's 
you lose it. Yeah, uh, it's very important to do that as mm -hmm. young as possible because yeah. when you don't have that critical lens towards yourself, mm -hmm. you can grow in ways that you can't when you're being a perfectionist. Yeah, and I know you're supposed to do the qu quality over quantity, but I always think like you kind of ease into that. Like you start with quality and then just kind of ease into less but better. Yeah, I feel bad for all the film students that I run into that don't make a movie until they're like 22 and almost done with their film degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There's so many great professional shit on YouTube these days. Yeah. There wasn't in 2008 when we were starting making videos of our own. Yeah, it was like So Smosh when we made a video, we didn't mm -hmm. yeah, we had Smosh and Ray William Johnson. We didn't have to the God. We didn't feel inadequate, you know, to Fred for the most part. Yeah. And Fred was the most subscribed guy on YouTube. He was us, you know? Yeah. And uh, our, us and our friends, we you know, this was right before smartphones became common amongst mm -hmm. preteens. So I had a flip cam. My mom's DV cam. Snap. Yeah, this camera. Like, these really cheap, shitty cameras and going out and making it, putting in a Windows Movie Maker or iMovie or Hell some yeah. knockoff program. But it felt amazing to you, you know? You felt yeah. like it was an accomplishment. Yeah. I don't think kids can do that so much these days because they open their phone and, like, they get this perfectionist bug that we have now, you know? Because... They're not going to grind up to that point. They're getting it before they like realize what it means. Yeah, they feel okay. like they're going to have to start high. We didn't feel like we had to start so high. If if kids go out and they, I mean, they have a fuck like the, their phone, like these phones, they record in 4K. Yeah. They get them for free from their fucking parents. All right. That always bumps me out. All right. You can get footage on this that's better than what we have right now. Mm -hmm. I made my first movies using, you know how like your computer has like a camera? Oh my yeah, god. That's what I use. And so for my first like 10 That's movies, awesome. I go like that. And, people, <laughs> and then I, uh, you know, you film stuff into what, like I, what is it? Um, like movie? photo booth, you know, oh. right? Because that's the only way <laughs> yeah. you can do it. And then you put it into iMovie and I was like, it <laughs> this looked terrible, but it was so much fun. I started, I, well, I, I guess I could say I started filmmaking when I was eight, but I mean, obviously it wasn't like a solid thing. It was just a, a Sony little handy cam with tapes, yeah. and I would make a little stop motion by uh, pressing record and then stopping and then <laughs> pressing record and stopping. Yeah. You know, just have a little like plastic dinosaur to use Joe yeah. Cross. And, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I feel like people that are the same age that we are when we started making videos, you know, basically 12 around that time. Yeah. They have better shit, but like, they went up to here in terms of tools, but like. Up to here is how far media that they consume has gotten online. The online world is no longer a wild west. You're not going to feel as comfortable, even as a little kid, I think, uploading something that you just made, and your friends are not going to watch this video that you just made and feel blown away, like, wow, yeah. this is us in video. And we're like, who the fuck cares? Everybody's in videos these days. They go on Instagram and people make these videos in a few seconds. Why spend the effort? All right? and. We don't get the same sense of bewilderment, I think, if we were starting right now making videos at 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, because we don't have this, uh, this, this free reign, this free pool that we can just dip into. Nope, it's adult swim now. <laughs> yep, it's fucking, what time is it? Yep, 9.08, adult swim only. And that's the way it's gonna awesome. be for the foreseeable future, if you ask me. But Sean, maybe you can put this into perspective because yeah, you're Sean. older than all of us and your first videos were probably made when I was a fucking embryo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I used a, um, I had a home video camera that you had to have plugged into the wall. And what yeah. year was this? Um, which yeah. which Spider-Man movie came out? One around the first movie. Okay. The first Spider-Man. Yeah, so That's probably. 2002. Yeah. yeah, okay, it's 2002 right, then. Here we go then. Yeah. <laughs> I chart years by Spider-Man movies. Our first movies we always made were like spoofs of movies that were popular at the time. Um, it was always me and my, my stepbrothers and my family. We would make, because um, we couldn't like edit, so we had to record on one tape. Oh snap, yeah. So I've we would, <coughs> you know, we would record like one, one scene and then we would pause it and then go to the next guy and record the next scene and pause it and go to the next guy and record the next scene. Yeah. And so like, <laughs> even the first movies I had in digital, that's how I would record. I wouldn't do like a whole scene. I would do a line and then I would stop and I would do the next person's line and I would stop and I would do the next person's line. Because that's how I grew up thinking that's how movies had to be made. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because you can see that in like the first video, the, the episode of the university. 
everything was filmed that way. I would record, uh, literally, like, line by line, we would stop and go to the next line. It wasn't an entire scene or anything like that. Huh. Wasn't it just great when you just did one take for things? Yeah, that's yeah. what I had to do was one take, because yeah. we couldn't, either that or we'd have to reverse the tape and record over it again. Yeah, and then you wouldn't get it right, so then it, like... Yeah. At the very end of the take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a different time back then. Definitely. Yeah. So do you feel like that's... Oh. Am I wrong? Am I just cynical about the modern age, about the sense of bewilderment? I think kids are going to do whatever they want. I don't think they really have a mm -hmm. feeling of trying to make things better than anyone else. They're still at an age where they make things uh, mm -hmm. because they want to make things. Mm -hmm. You know? At this age, we have to make things to make money. So we have to care about what it looks like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not like we're doing this 100% just for our own entertainment anymore. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we would want to make money off of it. Yeah, so uh, one thing that I've always considered very interesting in, uh, in film production, on the student level, on the amateur level, is that you get progressively lazier the further you go, you know? <laughs> have you, have you ever had that, right? You just get lazier as time goes on? Yeah, we're like, you, I start out, I always start out st spending like two hours on a shot. All right, yeah. two hours on one shot, and it feels like such a great shot. Then I realized, uh, yeah, it's about as dark as it is right now. And uh, then we start spending, we go from two hours, like, okay, let's spend one hour. And then it's like 45 minutes, we're like, Devin, we, we can't be rehearsing this much before a shot. Okay, okay, we'll rehearse a little bit less. Okay, okay, I guess we can use the same lighting setup. So now we're down to 30 minutes. Oh. Now we're down to 20 minutes because the schedule's going to... Like, hey, we got to finish this movie. This, the video projects do like next week. Yeah, but I really want it to look good, so let me just switch lenses real quick. We'll keep the lighting the same. We're not going to rehearse the lines. We're only going to do two takes. goes on and on and on. Then we're at five minutes a shot. Yeah. We do one take, and we beg that it works, and it doesn't work, but we all silently agree without talking to each other that the shot went well. Let's the say shot, it's good, and let's go to McDonald's. Yeah, we don't even say, let's say, we look at it. it was like, yeah, that was a good shot. It was like, yeah, that was a good shot. <laughs> yeah, that, that shot worked. We don't need to do another take, come on. What are we, perfectionists? And then, like, I, and then I, I pack up, and I'm thinking to myself, Man, I fucking spent like two hours on the first shot, but it was a really good shot. Eh, well, we'll see how it looks like when it's editing. And then I'm screaming during the editing process. So, I just felt like that's an abstract that has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, it's uh, getting pretty dark. And, you know, we could have used professional lights to... to so we, we could have not done this on the roof. But it's all about that ambition. Well, Isabel and I actually, in our senior year in high school, taught a video production class um, mm -hmm. of about 15 students or so, oh, um, which was certainly a unique experience. And, I mean, I think that's just really cool that we got that opportunity, really, to, so <laughs> to really instill, um, you know, kind of a love of filmmaking in other people. And, um, and I think just, I think that's what I'm most proud of is really... There, there are people that I know that are making films with me now, only because like I, I invited them to be on a shoot, and then you know I feel like, I mean I, I feel like I shouldn't take all the credit, but I feel like, um, almost like I've inspired some people, and I think that's really neat. Another really cool thing that I I think is really neat um, that I'm I'm proud of is is the group that I um, kind of started is still going on even without me being in Bellingham. So, like. I think that's really cool that we, we continue uh, to have kind of a community of young filmmakers in Bellingham who uh, want to keep doing stuff and want to collaborate together on this project that is Fourth Corner Films. Some people that you start with, you may be with for much longer than you think, mm -hmm. that you may be with forever. They may turn out to be the professionals you're looking for, because remember, they're young too, all right? So don't just assume that because they're your friends that there's something better to move on to. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised uh, the stuff that you can get out of and what your friends will develop into as you continue to make films, I think. So I think I'll just put a disclaimer. Um, I don't want to come across as your gurus. I mean, these guys have been actual fucking teachers. So I guess they can, <laughs> they can, they can pass off as proctors. When my uh, high school video professor had to leave for several months because of a heart attack, uh, we just brought in a teacher that knew absolutely nothing about filmmaking because he hated every single one of his students. And I'm glad you guys I hope he watches this. had a better version of that. I hope he's dead. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I hate him. 
but because I kind of don't like him, and it's also very likely that he's dead he right now. He's suffering a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... He doesn't want to see people suffer. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a good guy. I'm a, I'm a real yeah. good guy. I'm <laughs> fucking sentimental as hell. He's probably gone through like three hearts. I heard like he got his heart replaced and that ha that heart broken. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> both of your video teachers had heart problems? No, no, no. Uh, no, I mean like the same video teacher went through two hearts. I see. It's the thing. They replaced his heart with a better one, with a, like a good one, and that one broke. Oh and now they're now they're like thinking about whether or not they should give him another heart. Because he keeps on <laughs> using them? Yep, yep. One heart gone, shame on you. Two yep. hearts gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, at least I have my heart, and I will. I will. That's all I can say. That I'm not heartless. And not after that joke. I yeah. Can't say that. Oh yeah. I yeah. forfeit my sentimentality uh, card. But I mean, uh, yeah. Thanks for yeah. watching, and yeah. I'll thank you even more if you actually watch the other videos that these guys have made. You have like an end slate for these. I never watched any all the way through because they were so boring. Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ! <laughs> for these podcasts. You know what? I think I'll end the podcast right now. Is that actually... <laughs>